Valentino here. Not no motherfuckers like old bitch ass Ice Cube. Ice Cube. <laughs> Something you need to remember. O'Shea is cool, right? I mean, O'Shea in the strength that the brother's an entertainer. Other than that, he ain't no gangster. He never shot nobody. He ain't from 111. He ain't from the neighborhood. Grew up on, what, 108th and Van Wick, something like that. Van S. Van Wick, some shit. He ain't no gangster. But the way he parlays, he tends to make people believe he's the real G. And to be a G means to be able to put work in and be in the street and be, in, be respected. Where you can come on 108th and Western without WC. That's some real motherfuckers. Like they own their boom. You come out next video, West Coast. What about, what about the video? Yes, it's a whole... it is, to me it is the best coast. And everybody in New York feel like that too. That's why they come out here and party, man. Why is everybody acting like... Come I'm on, not saying, I didn't on, say, for me to say, do for me to say Cali is the West Coast, I never said New York ain't shit. I never said New York is the worst coast. I just said where I'm at, where I'm from is the best coast. Why is that offending people? Okay. Just like KRS-One, he called himself God. I ain't calling me God. I'm just one doing my part on where I think hip-hop should go. Everybody else doing their thing where they think hip-hop should go. I think hip-hop need to be about more money. But crazier sounds, different beats, more money. Because with more money, we can do something for the community that these hip-hop artists are coming out of. But getting more That's arts and arts means we can go into more coffee shops and do more performing and shit. You know what I mean? Let's get some papers, get some buildings, get some community centers. You can't do that without money. Okay, so but do you think that that's gonna, I mean, do you think it's gonna be boom, you take care of your business, boom, it's over, boom, everything's happily ever after. You know when you attack somebody, they attack that's you back. That's why I don't attack. I don't care if you put it out there or not, but I, I just don't like, like, I, I dig Ice Cube. I looked up to him. But because I looked up to him and I studied his style, mastered his shit, I know what he's doing is wrong. He's shit ain't selling, so now he's going on the war shit, right, and he's right. using us right. as the gas. He just dropped some shit called Bad Am. And if you listen to it, you can see he heard hit him up and was like, oh, that's how it's supposed to be. Uh -huh. Why he wasn't making him Bad Am when I was in jail? That's what I mean, that's wrong. Right. See, now that's wrong, and I'm not gonna let that happen, because then that would make me obsolete. If I let him come back and take, you can't have this. You know what I mean? I'm not doing that. You know, I only really uh, got a chance to hang with him one time. Uh, it was a trip because it was the last time I seen him, and it was the last time I seen Easy E. You know, it was the same day. Um, and, um, you know, it was just a cool dude. You know, I didn't really get a chance to really kind of, you know, have a have a relationship with him. But, you know, from what I could see, he just seemed a dude that was kind of ready. You could tell when it's, when it's your moment, you know, you got the swagger and you're feeling it. Um, but just one of the most talented MCs, you know, that we've ever had, you know, who could put style, you know, lyrical flow, and, um, you know, hit music together at the same time. So, you know, he, he's definitely... Um, you know, force in the world of hip hop and will always be. What do you think he would have been capable of if he had continued to live and he was still alive today? Um, you know, ain't no telling. You know, he seemed like a progressive dude. So to me, it seemed like he would have his hand and all kind of stuff. He'd probably have, you know, do like that. would probably have, you know, champagne or, or, uh, a vodka or something, you know, that he was pushing. Um, all lifestyle stuff, I think he would be into, um, you know. So, I I, I thought it was the sky was the limit for Biggie. We're, we're talking to Ice Cube. He's the murder is still unsolved. Who do you think killed him? Do you have any idea? You know, I have no idea. You know, from what I see, you know, from what I understand, it seemed like some kind of hit. Um, it don't seem like random violence. So. Um, you know, it's, it's, you got to ask about the people who, who wanted him dead, you know, um, or the people who wanted to to get other people blamed. You know, the thing is, it's like, and it, it, it was a situation, you know, when you feud in public, you know, if somebody come knock you off, then everybody going to think the other guy did it. So... It's always room for opportunists to stick their nose in there, 
to to get the pot stirred. So you just never know. <clears throat> We're talking to Ice Cube. So you don't necessarily buy into the idea that the Tupac and Biggie murders were connected one to each other and that was an East and a West Coast rap feud. Uh, I definitely don't. I definitely don't believe that with Tupac. <clears throat> I don't think Tupac's death had anything to do with the East Coast West Coast beef. Uh, I'm not sure about Biggie. <clears throat> you know, because Biggie happened after Tupac was dead. So, what uh, what kind of relationship did you have with Tupac? Um, you know, I considered Tupac, you know, as as. Not my little brother, but just a brother. Uh, you know, he was doing his thing with Digital Underground when I first met him. And when I spent the most time with him, you know, he was he was still in Digital Underground. So, you know, I knew him as a dude who just liked to have fun, you know, extremely passionate. And um, looking to, to, to find his way in hip-hop. So, you know, coming as a solo artist, it was cool to see him you know, start off with those first records, play with with Dear Mama, and then, you know, going on to work with Death Row. You know, it's like, it was just great to see him flourish as a solo artist and uh, become this mega superstar. When you think about the fact that he was only 26 when he died and the amount of records that he left behind, does a part of you look back at your own life and wonder how many times you could have come close to dying at a really young age? You're not that old of a guy now, but does it feel like a totally different world that you were in 20 years ago than now or not? Um, well, 20 years ago, I was doing this. So, you know, I would have to go back a little further, you know, maybe, maybe 30 years ago. Um, you know, it's like, I mean, I think I can count at least three times, maybe four, where I almost died uh, from from incidents, you know, from being, you know, all the way from a kid to an adult. And um, all the close calls that I had. And um, it's amazing just to be on the other side of that. But my heart still goes out for people who have to deal with those situations on a daily basis, you know, that still, it still fuels me in a lot of what I do, what I, especially what I do my music about. What's the closest you ever came to dying? We're talking with Ice Cube. Oh, man, when I was real young, I got hit by a car. So, I guess getting hit by a car is one of the closest. I've been drugged by a car. <laughs> so, you know, when we was young, we jumped on the back of this pickup truck you know, just messing around. And when I jumped off, the trailer hitch caught my leg, drug me down the street. Lucky the dude stopped or I would have I'd have been dead. He just drug me all the way on the, onto the main boulevard. So it's like them kind of incidents you think about. Uh, me and Dre was shot at a few times. Um, you know, one in particular, we was in, we was actually going to pick up pick up this singer that was singing on one of the records he was producing. And these little junior high dudes just start shooting at us. It was a trip. Uh, so it's been a few incidents where I almost died. Um, but I guess God had a different purpose for me. Uh, Valentino giving me suits, gangsters.